Hey everyone, Jake here from Unreal RPG Mastery. Welcome to the next part of our stealth game tutorial series. In this video, we're going to add the stealth takedown animation sequence. Before I start this part of the tutorial series, I'm going to show you a demonstration of what I'm going to teach in this video. So to start out, let's go ahead and create the can stealth interface. The reason we need to create this interface is because we need to return the Ken Stealth Boolean from the AI blueprint to the player character blueprint. Let's open up the AI interface. We need to create a new function. We'll call it Ken Stealth. Okay, and this one's going to need to output. Output of top Boolean. Call it Ken Stealth. Okay, now go to the AI blueprint. Compile. Open up Ken Stealth. Okay, now here we want to get controller. Get blackboard, get value as bool, key name, we need to make literal name, and the name that we want is from the blackboard. Make sure that the name is exactly the same or else it won't work. But we'll just copy the name, paste it here. Okay, now return get value as bool into can stealth, compile, and save. Now let's add a weapon to the player character and the AI. So to do that, we're going to use the free fantasy weapon sample pack from the marketplace. So just go ahead and add it to your project. Let's add the weapon to the AI first. Click on Add Component, type in Mesh. Call this Weapon Mesh. We're just doing this for testing purposes. If you were doing this for real, it'd probably be better to use a weapon blueprint or something like that. Now click on the Weapon Mesh, and then under Static Mesh, type in Sword. We need the SM underscore Sword. Compile and save. We okay, go to the Event Graph. And here we need On Event Begin Play, Attach to Component, Weapon Mesh. And we want the parent to be mesh. And socket name, we'll name it weapon socket. Copy the name for this for whenever we create the socket. Change all these to snap to target. Okay, go to the viewport, click on the mesh, go to the skeletal mesh. Now open up the skeleton. Go to the hand R bone. We need to add socket. And for this one, we'll paste weapon socket. Add preview asset, click on SM sword, and let's adjust it here. Okay, that's good enough for now. Save. Now let's add the weapon to the player character blueprint. Here we'll just do the same thing that we did for the AI. So we need to event begin play. We need to add mesh. Call this one weapon mesh. Also one thing that's really important, don't forget to set the collision presets to no collision. Because if we don't do that, we'll have all sorts of bugs. Do the same thing for the AI. Okay, compile and save the event graph, copy this code we did here, paste it on begin play for the player character. Okay, and now click on the weapon mesh for the player character, and we need to set the static mesh to sword. Okay, compile and save. Now let's see if it worked. As you can see, we now have a weapon mesh in the player's hand, and the AI has a weapon mesh as well in his hand. We go to project settings, under input, we need an attack, attack. We'll have this one as left mouse button. Okay, now go to the character blueprint. We need input action attack. Okay, now let's create a new function. We'll call it attempt stealth. Okay, now let's create a new variable. We'll call it stealth kill. And we want to call the attempt stealth on the attack input. And for your actual project, you will need to call this attempt stealth function on your attack input. Okay, now drag out stealth kill. We need a branch. We only want to continue if stealth kill is false. Now we need a line trace for objects. For the start position, we need to get actor location. And for the end, we need get actor forward vector. Vector times float, 150. Okay, now do vector plus vector. And add the actor location plus the actor forward vector times 150 as the end. Okay, for object types, we want to make array. Plug that into object types. Object types we want is pawn. Actors to ignore will be get reference to self, make array. Plug that into actors to ignore. All right, we just got the actor's location for the start of the trace. And then for the end of the trace, we got the actor's forward vector, which the actor's forward vector is the x vector. That's their forward vector. Times 150 plus the actor's location for the end. 
So just so you can visualize this, I'm going to turn this on for duration on the draw debug tab. So as you can see, this is what the line trace is doing. Now set the draw debug top back to none. And now break the hit result and get the hit actor. And we do promote to local variable. We'll call this one L underscore hit actor. Okay, plug that in here. Okay, now we need to create a new function. We'll call this one check enemy distance. Okay, now we need to add an input. Make this of top actor. We'll call this one execution hit actor. Okay, now we need an is valid node. And we only need to continue if the execution hit actor is valid. Okay, right click, top in get execution hit actor. Okay, now right click, top in get actor location. Now we need vector minus vector. Drag out from the execution hit actor. We need a get actor location. Okay, now we need to subtract these two vectors. Top in vector length. And this just basically gives us the distance between these two actors. So we need to promote this to a variable. Call this one enemy distance. Okay, now plug this into is valid. We can now drag out from here and top in less than or equal. So we need float less than or equal to float. So if the enemy distance is less than or equal to 200, we get a branch. Plug that into the condition. Now we need to create a new Boolean variable. Call this one close to enemy. Okay, set close to enemy to true. Here we need to set close to enemy to false. Add a return node. We'll name the output close to enemy. Okay, add another return node. Okay, now plug the boolean into the output. Okay, now make this a pure function. Go back to the attempt stealth function and call check enemy distance. The execution hit actor will be the local hit actor. We also need to call the can stealth message. We need and boolean. Plug this up into the other condition. Now we need a branch. Plug this up here. If this is true, we need to set stealth kill to true. This is false. We need to add a return node. The output will be top boolean. We'll call it stealth successful. So on the false path, we need to return stealth successful false. Actually, before we set stealth to true, we should check if an animation montage is playing or not. So drag out the mesh and get anim instance. Okay, drag out from get anim instance and top in montage is playing. So here we could check if a specific montage is playing, like for example we could check if the stealth montage is currently playing, but I'm not going to set any montage here for the input, that way it'll return true if any montage is playing, and it'll return false if any montage is not playing. So we need a branch, and we only need to continue if any montage is not playing. Okay, and now I need to play in a montage. Also I wanted to mention that if you don't do this, it could potentially cancel out of an animation and go right into the stealth animation montage. So for example, if you're like rolling or something and you roll right behind an enemy and you press the attack button for stealth, then it may cancel right out of the roll into the stealth. So it's really important that you do this. Now what we need to do is we need to go to the event graph, we need to create a custom event. We'll call this one execute actor rotation. Now for the input, we want the execution hit actor, make this a top actor call it execution hit actor. Okay, now the first thing that we need to do is we need to check if the execution hit actor is valid. And if it is valid, we need a timeline. We'll call it smooth transition. And plug is valid into play from start. Okay, now open up the timeline. We need to add a float track. And we'll call this float track alpha. All right, right click and add key to curve float. Time we want to be zero and value we want to be zero. Right click and add key to curve float. For this one, we want the time to be 0 0.3, and we want the value to be 1. Okay, now set the length to 0 0.3. Compile and save. Now go back to the event graph. Now we need to create a new function. Call this one get enemy distance in rotation. Okay, give this one an input. The input will be executed actor. Compile first, now right click and type in get executed actor. Now we need to get actor location. Now we need to get the location for the executed actor, so type in get actor location. Okay, now we need to get actor location for the player character, so type in get actor location. We need vector minus vector. Again, this just gets us the distance between two actors. Type in normalize. Now type in vector times float. And we need to promote this to a variable. Call this one execution distance. And we'll make the value for this one 60. And this just basically makes it to where you can set the distance between the actors during the execution sequence. Okay, now we need to get actor location. So we need to add this vector to the actor's current location. Okay, now drag out from here and type in return. 
Okay, now get the executed actor. Okay, now plug this return value into the return node. And we'll call this one location. Okay, now get the executed actor. And get actor rotation. Right click on the return value rotation and split struct pin. Okay, now we need, need to return value Z, the yaw, for the executed actor. And we'll rename this one to yaw executed actor. Okay, compile and save. Now, make this a pure function. Compile and save. Now we need to get actor location. And the actor location that we need to get is the execution hit actor. So plug that in here. Type in get actor rotation. And the rotation that we need to get is the execution hit actor. Drag out the get enemy distance and rotation pure function that we created. And for this one, we want to plug in the execution hit actor. Okay, now right click and type in lerp. We need lerp vector. And this just basically linearly interpolates between the A vector and the V vector based on the alpha. And the alpha that we're gonna use is the curve alpha. A is gonna be the actor's location for the execution hit actor. And B is going to be the location that we return from the get enemy distance and rotation. So it's going to linearly interpolate from the execution hit actor's location to the location that we calculated between the player character and the executed hit actor based on the alpha timeline that we created. Okay, and now we're going to do the same thing for the rotation. So right click and type in lerp, and we need the lerp rotator. For the A, we want to get the actor rotation for the execution hit actor. And for the B, we want to split struct pin. And the only thing that we care about here is the yaw. So drag out the yaw executed actor into the yaw here on the lerp rotator. And the alpha, just double click here, plug the alpha from the timeline into the alpha here for the lerp rotator. And we want to check shortest path. On update, we want to set actor rotation. In, and the actor's rotation that we want to set is the execution hit actor. And we need to plug the execution hit actor into the target. Okay, now plug the lerp rotator into the new rotation. Now we need to set actor location for the executed actor. And the new location that we want is this lerp vector. And we want to sweep. Okay, now we need to set the rotation for the player. So type in set actor rotation. Now let's go ahead and create a function to get the proper rotation for the player. We'll call it execution player rotation. Okay, we need an input of top actor. And this will be execution hit actor. Okay, compile. Now we need to get actor location. And we need to get execution hit actor. And now we need to get actor location for the execution hit actor. And again, we need to do vector minus vector to get the distance between the actors. We need to normalize. Okay, now we need to do vector times float. And we need to multiply this by minus one. And now we need the rotation from x vector. Now we need a return node. Now we need to split struct pin. Okay, now we just need to return value z, yaw. This just basically gets the distance between these two. Then we flip the vector by multiplying it by minus one. Then we get the rotation from x vector, which the rotation from x vector is this vector here, the forward vector. And then after that, we return the yaw. Now we need to make this a pure function. So check pure here, compile and save. Now we need to call this execution player rotation pure function that we created. Plug in the execution hit actor into the execution hit actor here. Now we need to get actor rotation. Now we need to split the rotator here. And we need to split the rotator here as well. Now for the player character, we need to return the X, the Y, and now we need to plug this in for the Z. Now open up attempt stealth. Right before the montage is played, we need to execute actor rotation. And the execution hit actor will be the L hit actor. Okay, now we need a way to tell the enemy AI that he's being stealth killed. So the way that we're going to do that is with an interface. So go back to the AI interface. We need to create a new function. We'll call it execute stealth. Okay, compile and save. Now go back to the third person character. Get the local hit actor. And now we need to do, now type in execute stealth message. Okay, and after that we need to add the return node and we need to return self successful true. Here we can return self successful false. Okay, now compile and save. Since we've coded it to where we can only stealth kill while stealth kill is false, we need a way to reset the stealth kill back to false. Otherwise, after we stealth kill one enemy, the player will never be able to stealth kill again. So what we can do is we can create a function for that. We'll call it reset stealth and we simply need to set stealth to false. 
set close to enemy defaults. Now go back to the event graph. Now we need a branch. If stealth successful is true, we want to set timer by function name. The function name we need is reset stealth. And for the time we need, let's go ahead and get the mesh, get anima instance, drag out from there and type in get current active montage. And type in is valid. If current active montage is valid, now type in sequence length. And this just gives us the sequence length for the animation montage. And we want to divide that by two. So about halfway through the animation sequence, we want to reset the stealth. Okay, now we need to promote this to a variable. We'll call this one reset stealth handle. Okay, now open up reset stealth, drag out the reset stealth handle. We need to clear it and invalidate timer by handle. Okay, now compile and save. Now we need to create the animation montages. Unfortunately, I don't have any free stealth takedown animations. However, you will need an execution animation and an executed animation. These animations need to be created to work together. You should be able to find some from the Unreal Marketplace. So I have some animations. I'm going to go ahead and create a montage from these. Okay, so on the player character in the attempt stealth function, the end montage that we want to play is the execution montage. Pile and save. Okay, now open up the patrolling AI blueprint. Go to the event graph. We need to call the event execute stealth, which is the interface function that we created earlier. And here we need to disable movement so the AI can't move or do anything while he's being executed. And then after that, we want to play in a montage. And the montage that we want to play is the stealth executed montage. Okay, now compile and save. Okay, now let's test it out and see if it works. As you can see, it works. However, we do have some bugs. So now we need to fix this bug where they're too far apart from each other. Do any of you guys have any guesses as to why this is happening? Before we fix this, I want you guys to think about it for a second. What's causing this issue? What could cause this issue? The reason why this is happening is due to the collision. So the collision for the capsule component is preventing the actors from getting close enough to each other to perform the stealth kill. So to fix that, it's actually pretty simple. All we need to do is go back to the patrolling AI. We need to get the capsule component. We need to do the set collision response to channel. And we need to do this before we play the end of montage. The channel is pawn, and we want to set the new response to overlap. All right, so now the capsule component will overlap pawns. Okay, now let's try it again, see if that bug is fixed. Okay, as you can see, the bug is now fixed. But now we're having issues with the camera. So to fix the bugs with the camera, just go to project settings, go to collision. Under presets here, we need to open up pawn. Now we need to set the collision response to ignore. Hit accept. Also open up ragdoll and do the same thing. Set the collision response to ignore for the camera. That way we won't have any camera bugs whenever the camera overlaps with either a pawn or a ragdoll physics body. We also need to set camera to ignore on the character mesh. Okay, now let's test it out and see if those camera bugs are fixed. As you can see, there are no bugs with the camera now. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add ragdoll physics for the character after he's been executed. But before we do that, I actually want to help you visualize something a little bit better. So let's go to the execute actor rotation here. Let's go to the get enemy distance and rotation. Now this execution distance. I want to show you what this does. So we set it to 60 because that, that's what I found to be a good value for these animations. Let's just put a 1 here, 160. A really large value so you can vi visualize what's happening really well. Actually, a really good way to learn things is just to say what happens if. What happens if I do this? And that's what I'm doing right now to kind of teach you what's going on here. And as you can see, the character went really far forwards. Okay, now let's set it back to 60. Pile and save. Okay, now let's make the enemy ragdoll after he's been stealth killed. So let's do that with an interface. So open up the AI interface and let's create a new function. We'll call this one stealth ragdoll. Okay, now compile and save. Okay, now go to the patrolling AI. Let's call the event stealth ragdoll. Okay, now get the character movement. Set movement mode to none. And we're just doing this just in case you ever call this without calling the execute stealth. If you ever call this without calling execute stealth, then we need to disable movement. Okay, now get the mesh. Then we need to set collision profile name. And the collision profile name we need is ragdoll with no caps. Okay, and now we need to right click, make literal name. And the name that we need is, go to the mannequin and we need the pelvis name, so right click, copy selected bone names. Go back to the AI blueprint. 
Okay, now drag out from the mesh and top and set all bodies below simulate physics. And we want the new simulate to be true. The end bone name will be the pelvis. Okay, now let's create some functionality for the AI to kind of fly forward a little bit after he's been executed. To do that, drag out from the mesh, type in set physics linear velocity. Plug that in here. Okay, and for the velocity, we need to get actor forward vector. And we need vector times float. And the value that I'll act for this is a thousand. Plug this into the new velocity. The bone name would be the pelvis. Okay, now compile and save. Okay, so now we need to know when to enable the ragdoll. When we're going to enable the ragdoll is during this animation, the character stabs the enemy, and after he stabs the enemy, he kicks him away. So right after the kick, we want to enable the ragdoll. So close this montage out. The way we're going to tell the AI when he should ragdoll is with an animation notify. Okay, so go to your blueprints folder, create a new folder, and we'll call it anim notifies. Okay, open it up. Now we need to create blueprint class. Okay, click on all classes here and type in anim notify. Select the anim notify. Call this one stealth ragdoll an for anim notify. Okay, now open it up. Okay, and on the functions, we want to override receive notify. And here we want to get owner. And this just gets the owning actor of the mesh component. We're going to call this notify on the executed animation. So that means this will get the AI blueprint. Okay, and now we need to call the stealth ragdoll message. Compile and save. Okay, now open up the executed montage. And we want to enable Ragdoll after he gets kicked forward before he hits the ground. So around right here. Now add the Stealth Ragdoll AN. Okay, now let's test it out and see if it works. As you can see, everything works fine. However, there's one problem. The enemy holds on to his weapon the entire time. And the enemy is still holding on to his weapon even though he's dead. So let's go ahead and make the enemy drop his weapon. Go to the patrolling AI blueprint, get the weapon mesh. Okay, now we need is valid. So we only need to do this if the weapon mesh is valid. If it is valid, set collision profile name. We need to set the collision profile name to ragdoll. Now we need to drag out from the weapon mesh and type in set simulate physics. We need to set that to true. I forgot to mention this, but we need to do this on the event stealth ragdoll interface event that we created. And we're, we're doing this right at the end after set physics linear velocity. Let's test it out and see if it works. As you can see, he drops his weapon. Now that we have this stealth takedown execution sequence working, let's add some sounds and effects to really make it look good. Let's add some sounds to the execution montage first. So right whenever he stabs the enemy, let's play sound. Click on add notify, up in sound, click play sound. You can play whatever stab sound that you have. I'm going to play the sword damage cue sound that I have. And now whenever he kicks the enemy away, I'm going to add another sound. The sound here that I'm going to add is the kicking sound that I have. So at the point it looks like the sound should play, you can move the notify to that point. So go ahead and move them around to wherever you want. That's pretty good. Now let's add some effects to the executed montage. Here we can add a stabbed sound effect and blood effect. So open it up. Right here is when he gets stabbed. So let's play sound. The sound that we want to play is my death sound cue that I have. And here whenever he gets stabbed, let's add a new track. Okay, we want to play particle effect. And I have a blood impact particle effect. But as you can see, the blood effect is in the application. It's playing at his feet. What you can do is you can click on the particle effect and you can add a location offset. So let me show you a value here just to test it on the Z. And that moved it a little bit. The value that I found that I like for these, for this particular effect, is minus 50 for the Y and 140 for the Z. Okay, let's see how it looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let's test it out in game. That looks really good. So now we have a stealth execution takedown sequence. Okay. Now you guys have an AI that can patrol, search for the player, follow the player, and now you can perform a really cool stealth takedown sequence. Thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial was able to help you guys. And if you enjoyed this tutorial and want to see more in the future, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel.